Hello, it's Ruby, and today I've decided to film a light academia inspired study with me. Today I was focusing on getting some notes written up and I went through my composition notebook of class notes and highlighted the bits I wanted to transfer. If you're wondering, at the moment I am working on notes for the brain. So then I quickly wrote out a list of all of the criticisms topics on a post-it note and then I wrote out really quickly some context notes. So then I got started on writing up the main type notes. Then I took one of my pumpkin productivity study planners and I already had a to-do list but I wanted to make a timetable so I just cut off half of the sheet and stuck this to the parchment. Next I was writing the notes for DreamWorks. So this is a subsection of the psychoanalysis topic which is broken up into the uncanny and DreamWorks. Freud's construction of the uncanny is really interesting um, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. So in German, unheimlich is the word for uncanny and that is the opposite of heimlich which means home and Freud basically bases his argument for the uncanny on this distinction between heimlich and unheimlich and how in language one is the opposite of the other so he argues that something uncanny is that which is a subversion of the home and definitely practically if you look at it this isn't utterly unconvincing. I mean as an English student as someone who loves words and is fascinated by words I do in principle love this argument but just the way he arrives at this and the way that he presents it as scientific is highly problematic as most people today will say and I mean in his defense 
he was using language as a last resort. It was the second best thing because he wasn't able to cut open people's heads and actually look at the brain and do neuroscience. Instead, he chose to look at language because it was the thing that linked up thought and experience. Next, I went on to writing my post-structuralism notes. Just went through and highlighted the seminar prep, lecture notes, seminar notes that I had in this notebook. If you're wondering, my color code system is pretty basic. I'm just using mild liners and purple is something that is just core knowledge. Gray is my own criticism. I'm adding in more criticism with the blue pen and red is something I want to look into further. Instead of typing up these notes, I just wrote them up on my iPad and this is because post-structuralism is, above all else, a philosophical argument and I just find it more useful to do this by hand so that I can show the links between things with arrows. Post-structuralism, as you can imagine, follows structuralism. So structuralism was developed by Saussure and it's basically unpicking language and saying that all language is composed of signifiers and signified. So the signifier is the word itself, the actual word tree would be the signifier, and then the signified is the actual physical tree which it refers to. So that's structuralism, but in post-structuralism, Derrida basically argues that it's a continuous loop between the signifier and the signified. There's no way to distinguish between the two because they're always affected by each other and by an endless chain of other signifiers and signified. For example, my understanding of bird will affect the way that I think of tree and the, the very fact that the word tree rhymes with knee might affect the way that I understand the word. It's very interesting. I'd recommend looking into it. So next, we decided to go on our state-mandated walk of the day. When I got back I helped my sister with something for college so I was just on a shared Google Drive document with her and laughing hysterically. Then here I was just working on some more notes. And then lastly I finished off the evening by doing some work for my upcoming essay. This is the one where I rewrite the opening of one book in the style of another so I'm just doing yet more reading on Dickens and his writing style. This is so so fascinating. Mainly though, what I'm doing here is I went through my essay and I highlighted bits that I wanted to do further research for. So I was just filling in those gaps in my research here. And one of my favorite things I did was look through some old times articles for um, an archived case of a shooting uh, like on a farm which I could reference. And that's pretty much all of the work I did today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this dark academia themed study with me and I hope that you have a productive week.